Are you feeling overwhelmed by the idea of creating a financial plan? You're not alone, but listen, it doesn't have to be complicated or scary. In today's video, we're going to simplify financial planning for beginners with seven simple steps to help you create a solid and effective financial plan. That's right, just seven steps to take control of your money, start making progress towards your goals, and build a more secure financial future. We're talking about practical, actionable advice that you can start using today, no matter your income level or financial background. All right, let's dive right into step number one, assessing your current financial situation. You can't plot a course to your destination if you don't know where you're starting from, right? So how do we do this? Well, it's all about taking a clear, honest look at your income, expenses, assets, and liabilities. Start by tracking your income. This includes your salary, any side hustles, or any other sources of money coming in. Next, track your expenses and be thorough. Look at everything from your rent or mortgage payments to your daily coffee runs. Once you have a good grasp on your cash flow, it's time to list out your assets. These are things you own that have value, your car, savings accounts, investments, even your phone or laptop. Finally, make a list of your liabilities, things like student loans, credit card debt, or any other money you owe. By understanding your current financial picture, you can identify areas where you're doing well and areas where you might need to make some adjustments. Maybe you'll find that you're spending way more on takeout than you realized or that you have some extra cash flow you can direct towards your goals. Remember, this isn't about judging yourself or feeling bad about your financial situation. It's about gaining clarity and empowering yourself to take control of your money. Now, once you've got a good handle on your current finances, we can move on to the exciting part, setting those financial goals. All right, now that you have a clear picture of where your finances stand, it's time for step two setting clear financial goals. This is where things start to get exciting. Think of your financial goals as your personal roadmap to financial success. What do you want to achieve with your money? Do you dream of buying a house, traveling the world, retiring early, or maybe just having peace of mind knowing you have a solid financial safety net? Whatever your aspirations are, write them down and be specific. Instead of just saying, I want to save more money, set a concrete goal like, I want to save $5,000 for a down payment on a car in the next 12 months. You've probably heard of SMART goals before, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This framework is incredibly helpful when it comes to setting financial goals. Make sure your goals are specific and measurable, meaning you can track your progress and know when you've achieved them. They should also be achievable and realistic. Don't set yourself up for failure by aiming for something completely out of reach. Most importantly, your goals should be relevant to your values and aspirations. Once you have your long-term goals in mind, break them down into smaller, more manageable short-term goals. The key is to have a clear direction and a plan to get there. Now let's move on to step three, creating a simple budget. I know, I know the word budget doesn't exactly spark joy for everyone, but trust me, budgeting is not about restricting yourself or feeling deprived. It's about taking control of your money and making it work for you. Think of your budget as your financial game plan. It's about allocating your income in a way that aligns with your goals and priorities. Start by listing out all your sources of income and then track your expenses for a month or two to get a clear picture of where your money is going. You can use a budgeting app, a spreadsheet, or even just a notebook. Once you have a good understanding of your cash flow, you can start allocating your income towards different categories like housing, transportation, food, entertainment, and of course, savings. A popular budgeting method is the 50-30-20 rule, where you allocate 50% of your income to needs, 30% to wants, and 20% to savings and debt repayment. Now, the key to successful budgeting is to be realistic and flexible. Don't try to cut back on everything all at once. It's all about finding a balance that works for you. Remember, budgeting is an ongoing process, not a one-time thing. The more you practice budgeting, the easier and more intuitive it will become. All right, let's move on to step four, which is all about building a solid emergency fund. An emergency fund is essentially your financial safety net. It's a stash of cash that's specifically set aside for unexpected expenses, like a medical bill, car repair, job loss, or anything else that could pop up and throw your finances off track. The goal is to have three to six months worth of living expenses saved in your emergency fund. Now I know that might sound like a lot, especially when you're first starting out, but trust me, it's worth it to have that peace of mind knowing that you can handle whatever life throws your way without going into debt. So 
how do you actually build this emergency fund? Well, start by setting a realistic savings goal. It could be $500, $1,000, or even just $50 a month, whatever you can comfortably afford. The key is to be consistent. Treat your emergency fund savings like any other bill and automate your savings so you don't even have to think about it. Another great way to boost your emergency fund is to find ways to increase your income. Make sure you keep your emergency fund separate from your regular checking account. Okay, let's talk about step five planning for retirement and investments. I know what you might be thinking. Retirement isn't that like a million years away? But here's the thing. The earlier you start planning and investing for retirement, the better off you'll be in the long run. Time is your greatest asset when it comes to investing, thanks to the power of compound interest. Compound interest is basically interest earned on interest. The longer your money is invested, the more it has the potential to grow exponentially. So even if you can only afford to invest a small amount right now, it can make a huge difference over time. A great place to start is with a 401k or a Roth IRA, especially if your employer offers a matching contribution. These are retirement accounts that offer tax advantages and can help you grow your savings over time. Once you've maxed out your retirement accounts, you can explore other investment options like index funds, ETFs, or even real estate. The key is to do your research, understand your risk tolerance, and diversify your investments. Remember, investing involves risk, and there are no guarantees. Don't be afraid to seek help from a financial advisor if you need guidance. All right, let's tackle step six, reducing and managing debt. Debt can be a major financial burden, but the good news is that it's something you can take control of. The first step is to create a list of all your debts, including the balances, interest rates, and minimum payments. This will give you a clear picture of what you're dealing with. Once you have a good understanding of your debt, you can start exploring different debt repayment strategies. Two popular methods are the snowball method and the avalanche method. With the snowball method, you focus on paying off your smallest debt first while making minimum payments on all your other debts. This can be a great motivator because you get to celebrate those small victories early on. With the avalanche method, you prioritize paying off your debt with the highest interest rate first. This approach can save you money on interest in the long run. No matter which method you choose, consistency is key. Make it a priority to make more than the minimum payments whenever possible. Another crucial aspect of managing debt is to avoid taking on more debt than you can handle. Remember, getting out of debt takes time and effort, but it's definitely possible. And finally, let's talk about step seven, reviewing and adjusting your financial plan regularly. Creating a financial plan isn't a one and done deal. It's an ongoing process that requires regular check-ins and adjustments. Think of it like going to the doctor for a checkup. Life is constantly changing and your financial plan needs to be flexible enough to adapt to those changes. Aim to review your financial plan at least once a year, or more often if you experience any major life events like a job change, marriage, or having a baby. During your review, take a look at your budget, savings goals, debt repayment progress, and investments. Are you still on track to meet your goals? Do you need to make any adjustments? The key is to be proactive and make adjustments as needed. Remember, your financial plan is a living document and it's okay to make changes as you learn and grow. The most important thing is to have a plan in place and to be actively engaged in managing your finances. So there you have it. Seven simple steps to create a financial plan for beginners. Remember, financial planning doesn't have to be complicated or overwhelming. By taking these small but significant steps, you can gain control of your money, achieve your financial goals, and build a more secure future. Now I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your financial goals? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more videos on personal finance, investing, and building wealth.